This is Colleen Parsons with Thorax and Lungs, your Respiratory Assessment, Part 3. So gathering, um, gathering objective data is a very important part, obviously. So we're going to look at the shape of the thoracic cage. We're going to note the shape and configuration of the chest wall. We're looking at the um, width, width from front to back versus side to side. And front to back should be half as big as side to side, or side to side should be twice as large as front to back. We're looking at the neck's muscles. Are they fully developed for the age and occupation of that person? We're inspecting how they breathe. Are they over in a tripod, tripod position? Are they sitting up straight and breathing comfortably? We're assessing their skin color and condition based on their skin tone. So we're looking for a cyanosis or pallor or ruddiness. The color should be consistent with the person's genetic background, with allowances for sun exposure on the chest and back. Um, and we are looking for any lesions or any changes in freckles or moles. That's the nevis. We're looking for symmetric expansion. So when they take a breath in, is the right side equal to the left side? Is it symmetric? Um, and this is where we put our thumbs together on, you do it on the front and on the back. And you will be able to see if your thumbs come apart when they're taking a breath in. Tactile fremitus is again when you put your hands on the person's chest down to see how the um, oh my goodness how the um, vibration feels and is it symmetrical equal on both sides we use 99 it's the easiest one for us to we don't start all the way up here for our purposes that would be more for nurse practitioners or somebody who has a significant um, respiratory issue. So if you're working at, on a pulmonary unit, you might do that. So you're going to, um, well, this is still feminist, and percussion. So we're going to percuss the intercostal spaces making sure that we don't percuss on bone. We're watching how the diaphragm goes up and down. Ask the person to exhale and hold it, and then breathe in and see if there are any changes. Some of these things we don't really do as a routine. So breath sounds is very important. We're gonna evaluate the presence and quality of normal breath sounds we're going to instruct the person to breathe through their mouth a little bit deeper than usual using the flat diaphragm of your stethoscope and a side to side comparison will actually look like a Z shape. So side to side and then over to this side again. See what I'm doing? You don't do up all on one side and then the other. You can't assess symmetry very well. Do not confuse background noise with lung sounds. That's why it's very, very important to actually listen on the skin and not through clothing. So for our purposes, you can be listening through clothing for your skill assessment, but I want you to be listening on skin. And if you're uncomfortable holding the stethoscope on somebody's skin, ask them to put it underneath their shirt and then you can move it underneath their shirt or have them move it underneath 
their shirt so that you can listen to what lung sounds like without um, them taking their shirt off. You need to become familiar with those extraneous no noises and sounds. So what is an extraneous noise? It's, it's actually a sound that shouldn't be there, like um, you can hear your own self breathing sometimes, if, especially if you're breathing on the tubing of your stethoscope. Um, when your tubing bumps together, if the patient is shivering, if the patient has clothes on, if the patient has a hairy chest, and as you move the stethoscope around, you can hear the rustling. And that sometimes can sound a little bit like a uh, friction rub. The rustling of if they have a paper gown on or paper drapes, all different kinds of things that you can hear that will sound like it's in the lungs and they are not. So what should you be hearing and what shouldn't you be hearing? You would expect to hear the bronchial sounds that's up here, the bronchial vesicular sounds down here and the vesicular sounds. So those are the three sounds you really need. Look these up in your book, learn them, learn where they are. You'll be tested on those. I don't, I'm not sure if there's a quiz question on those three, but it will be on your final for sure. There's usually a quiz question, so I would expect there is one. And what do they sound like? advantageous sounds. There are added sounds that aren't normally heard in the lungs, but if they are there, they're important. So those are crackles, which mean crackles, and sometimes crackles are called rails. That usually means there's fluid in the lungs. There's the wheeze or ronchi. It can be called either one. And um, those are terms that you'll very often hear. So understand what they sound like and what they mean. Atelectic crackles is a type of advantageous sound that is not pathologic. It's a short, popping, crackling sound. Sounds sort of like Rice Krispies kind of a thing, but, but not. I don't know how to explain it. Um, it doesn't last for more than a few breaths. And it happens when secretions of the alveoli are not fully aerated. So if somebody's just waking up or going to sleep and they deflate, their, the crackles are heard when these secretions are expanded by a few deep breaths. Voice sounds determine the quality of voice sounds or vocal resonance. And you can use 99, but you can also use A and E. So, but E, use the E word, because if the E sounds like an E, like it's supposed to, that is normal. If it sounds like an A, that is abnormal. Your patient will very often talk to you while you're trying to listen to their breath sounds, so you can hear through the stethoscope. But if you can't, distinguish exactly what's being said. That's a good thing. So normal voice transmission is soft, muffled, and indistinct. Oh, that sounds like that could be a quiz question. You can hear the sound through your stethoscope, but you can't always make out what, you're, what they're saying. That's when the listener will pop off the stethoscope to hear. Uh, pathology that increases lung des density enhances transmission of voice sounds. So if there is fluid in the lungs or um, a mass in the lungs, you'll be able to hear those voices, voice sounds better. Note the shape and configuration of the chest wall. We've already talked about that. Um, And palpation, you're going to palpate the chest wall. You're looking for symmetry and lesions, tenderness, and um, pain. And you're going to 
use your palms of your hands to do the fremitus, uh, tactile fremitus, with them saying 99. They're going to essentially, your hands will essentially be in the same places where your stethoscope will be. And then you're going to begin percussing in the, you don't have to go all the way up to the super clavicular areas, but you're going to go down uh, your intercostal spaces. You're going to also, let's see, that's the anterior chest. You're doing the same thing on both sides. Begin percussing. Um, no borders. And then you're going to auscultate the breath sounds. So you might even ask your patient not to talk until you ask them to while you're listening. Oh, here's the question. So I've already answered this for you. Um, for our purposes, we're using uh, oximeters to measure pulmonary uh, oxygenation. So I'm not going to go through too much of this. You won't be percussing, or you'll be. You might auscultate children, but you're not going to do any of the rest of this. Developmental competence. So in pregnant women, the thoracic cage will appear wider and deeper respirations and increase in tidal volume by 40%. Good, good question. Uh, whoops. The chest cage in aging adults, the chest cage commonly shows an increase anterior posterior diameter giving it a more round barrel shape kyphosis which is the rounding of the upper back or outward curvature of the thoracic spine is evident and that will affect breathing chest expansion may be somewhat decreased although still symmetric but it will be decreased just because, remember, we talked about in one of the previous ones, everything becomes a little bit harder, more rigid. And they, we tend to tire more easily during auscultation, especially when doing deep mouth breathing. So make sure you ask your patient if they are getting dizzy or if it's hard for them to take these deep breaths. Oh, uh, pregnant women will have a physical change too. They'll have lordosis or in very heavy um, people, that curvature of the spine to support the weight that's out in front. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do this. And sample charting. It's always an interesting thing. what happened there. Summary checklist. So you've got your inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. And know what all of these words are. What a barrel chest is. What So one of these is um, inward. One of them is out. Well, more inward in a different way. And scoliosis and kyphosis. So know what these are that's a question on your quiz or a couple questions on your quiz scoliosis is a curvature of the spine there are great pictures i think the pictures over oh, here they are coming up there's a very severely uh, severe scoliosis there kyphosis good picture of that you can see why it would be difficult breathing Abnormal, there's great pictures in your book. Here's some more abnormal findings. You're going to want to know what all of those mean at some point. You know what some of them mean already. Um, and those, not necessarily for your quiz. And 
as a practitioner, you're going to want to know the difference between fine crackles, coarse crackles, and electric crackles, plural friction rum. That sounds like leather, two pieces of leather rubbing together. Um, you'll hear that. And it's not quite like that, but sort of. And um, you'll hear it. When Once you hear it, you'll know it. A wheeze and what that means. And a strider and what that means. These are all things you need to know and what they mean. What disease processes are usually associated with them. And here are all of your common respiratory conditions. You're going to see and treat these no matter where you work. So know what they mean. So what's a pneumothorax? Well, it's a deflation in one of the lungs. Um, tuberculosis, pneumonia, you'll see a lot, a lot of pneumonia. Congestive heart failure, that brings with it fluid in the lungs. Bronchitis is a, a condition that very often comes up, especially with people with um, limited lung function. So know what all of these are and what they mean. And that is the end of that. So let me go through here and see if there are... I'll just put a slide here for you. Um, so you want to know bronchio uh, phony B R O N C H O P H O N Y. Know what that sound is. Know what the friction rub sounds like. Crackle strider. Know what they sound like. Know what asthma is, plural effusion, pneumonia, and atelectasis. Covered that one. Yeah, I think we're good here. I think we've talked about it all. Okay. All right. So hopefully this, uh, the videos will help you in your quiz and in learning more about respiratory conditions. Thank you.